What's up, members of the Barrio? It's John, coming to you from the West Village of Manhattan. And there's so many of you out there who have visited New York City multiple times, and, and you're just plain tired of all the touristy stuff. Maybe you've walked the Brooklyn Bridge two times, you've been to the High Line more times than you could count. Well, today's video is for you. I'm gonna be sharing 10 non-touristy things you can do on your next trip to New York City. Guys, make sure to check out my other NYC playlists, all linked down below. Here we go. You've done Central Park already, top to bottom, I get that. But if you wanna visit a beautiful park that's barely on any tourist radar, go uptown to Fort Tryon. Straddling Hudson Heights and Inwood at the top of Manhattan, this gem is your perfect stopover on a nice day. There's so many paths to take where you'll be strolling, overlooking the Hudson River, but it feels more like upstate than the city. It seems like there's a surprise around every corner, like that epic view of the George Washington Bridge in the distance. Or just find a park bench and relax from this epic perch. You could definitely consider a picnic here as well. Of course, no trip would be complete without a visit to the Cloisters, which houses over 2,000 pieces of medieval artifacts and gets absolutely nowhere near the attention of some of Manhattan's other more famous museums. Another add-on would be going to Washington High to eat some incredible Dominican food after. But remember, you could wander Fort Tryon Park for a while, so take your time and soak in one of Manhattan's best parks that not enough people know about. If you're as big a fan of public art as I am, Bushwick, Brooklyn is a must visit. We just shot a neighborhood guide to Bushwick last week and you could absolutely take a self-guided tour and just wander many blocks admiring the work. And the majority of these pieces are actually commissioned, some even by the businesses housed inside for promotion. Believe me, you'll snap so many photos, it's overwhelming. And the great part is that the art is always changing. So if you come back in a few years, you may see something new. If you want something even more hands-on sign up for a graffiti workshop with graph tours we did this one more than a year ago and i thought it came out quite nice if you're into 90s themed logos this could also be a fun family activity see the card above for more info This is something I'm trying to do more often myself. There are many art galleries in the Chelsea neighborhood of Manhattan that hold openings every Thursday night. And to try to entice you, they provide complimentary drinks, sometimes even complimentary food. We went recently to this gallery that had two Japanese artists showing off their work, and it's an absolutely incredible free date idea. From the free alcohol and snacks to the interesting artwork, we even got to hear from the artists themselves and saw this guy rocking out with his guitar. You can join the meetup.com art gallery hop group or go to artcards.cc for more information about specific openings, but I highly suggest you try this out because you'll be supporting local artists and you can even talk to them about their creative process. New York City has some of the most diverse food options on planet Earth and heading to Jackson Heights just 25 minutes from downtown Manhattan is an excellent start. Hop off the train in Jackson Heights on Roosevelt Ave and I promise you'll barely see a tourist in sight. We've covered Jackson Heights and Elmhurst numerous times on the channel. You could find everything from Indian to Tibetan momos to Bengali fushka and it's not hard to create your own adventure with all the delicious and affordable street carts in the area. If you're not too familiar with the city, I highly recommend taking a street food tour with Greg and Jumi. These locals eat, sleep, and did I mention eat their way through the most delicious food trucks you've never heard of. Check out our video together for more information on how to book them and step off the eaten path. Members of the Barrio, if you didn't hear in the last video, we have just started a Patreon page. Now, nothing is changing on the channel. I'm still offering the exact same content here for free, but if you wanna support what we're doing, 
I'm gonna reward you for it with some really cool perks. So check out the Patreon link down below in the description. And to entice you more, until September 22nd, I'm offering two bonuses for free, an itinerary of the perfect first day in New York City, and my 10 favorite places to eat in Greenwich Village. So guys, give it a look if you're interested, thanks. If you're watching this, you've probably walked the Brooklyn Bridge once, maybe twice. Well, I can assure you the Williamsburg Bridge is going to be a lot less crowded. Ah, uh, the Williamsburg Bridge Walk. An amazing experience, especially if you're into photography. A big advantage this bridge has is that bikes get a separate lane on the other side, which is a huge issue on the Brooklyn Bridge. And while the Brooklyn Bridge is more iconic, this one feels more like old school New York City, what with a subway running right through the middle. And while the views aren't particularly epic, I find myself taking more photos of the actual structure itself and some of the interesting touches all around. And it's nice not having to dodge people taking photos nonstop. Although if you do feel the need to take a picture or video, please be aware of joggers before you do so. But there's so many benefits to this walk, like the unique view of Manhattan from the other side, or the fact that you've just entered Williamsburg, which quite frankly, you could spend an entire day Exploring. So if you're tired of the more tourist-filled bridge, give the Williamsburg a shot. While you may want to go to restaurants nonstop, there is nothing more local than having a picnic at a smaller park. Go grab a sandwich from a deli, or better yet, hit up the famous Dosa Man in Washington Square Park. We waited in line 45 minutes, and the buzz surrounding this place is off the charts. The owner is super friendly, and it was fun watching him make the dosas right in front of us. The special pondi cherry was so delicious, but it doesn't matter what park you pick because having a picnic is a nice break from the hustle and bustle of either living in New York or just sightseeing all day. Depending on the place, you can even find street performers or live music and get a front row seat for some great entertainment. Just remember to always tip if you enjoyed the show. New York City has all types of nightlife and many tourists flock to the rooftop bars, which are very cool, but personally, I prefer going to speakeasies or hidden bars. We did an awesome video on the channel showing you around some of New York's finest speakeasy bars. And if you want to add a little adventure to your next trip, consider going at least once. The most famous one by far is Please Don't Tell, located behind an old phone booth at Criff Dogs in the East Village. It can be tough to get a reservation, but it's worth visiting for the sheer novelty and some tasty libations. My personal favorite is UES, which is located inside of an ice cream shop. Just make sure to know the magic words to get in. Want to check out the storage room? Of course, put the back room on your list as they truly embody the spirit of the 1920s drinking den and probably have the most unique interior. And for all you cocktail aficionados, I don't know if I've ever had a better drink in New York City than the one at Bathtub Gin. Make a reservation for one of their burlesque nights. Thank me later. I've harped on this point in numerous other videos. You've been to many of the major museums in New York City, and now you want to get a little bit more off the beaten path. Well, we've got you covered. One place that nobody ever talks about, which I absolutely love, is the Paley Center for Media, a pay-what-you-wish venue. You can bring the kids to play video games downstairs and go upstairs to scan through old TV shows and commercials on computers. If you thought YouTube had an extensive library, you haven't seen anything yet. The Francis Tavern Museum has got to be one of New York's most underrated places. Located in the financial district where the city first started, trace the Big Apple's revolutionary roots. And I keep bringing it up all the time only because I love it. The Transit Museum in Brooklyn still is my favorite all-time museum to visit. I could spend all day on those old subway cars taking photos, but I digress. You've been to Chelsea Market, maybe you've even visited Smorgasburg on a weekend. I think this one is better than both. 
I will never run out of positive things to say about the Queens night market. In the most diverse borough in New York City, not only can you find some extremely exotic cuisine, but everything is around $5 or less, making sampling food from different countries as simple as walking from one stall to another. Our friends at Food and Footprints also made an amazing video on their channel about it. In fact, the last time I went, they made me order these out of this world Malaysian burgers. It tastes even better than it looks. I bet many of you can't even point Mauritius out on a map, but you can sure as heck eat some chicken biryani from the Mauritian vendor. Need I plug this market any more than I have already? And most of the attendees here aren't tourists, but locals from Queens. So if you're in town on one of the weekends it's going on, I recommend you give this a look. And have dessert at Moon Man. Trust me, you won't regret it. If you're in Manhattan's East Village and looking for an escape, visit one of the community gardens, which gives new meaning to the word concrete jungle. These are absolutely incredible. Many New Yorkers have no clue about them. We made a whole video last fall visiting some of the most famous ones. You may be surprised what you find inside, like wildlife. But one of the best things to do is just find a spot to relax. There's so many benches and hideaways. My favorite is the Green Oasis on Avenue D, which has a tiny waterfall and a little fish pond. You can go say hi to the many cats that come and go as well. As another cool bonus, if you head near the First Street Garden, there's some incredible street art. You could make an entire afternoon of just hopping between the dozens of these gardens in the East Village area, and you'll be seeing a great part of New York City history in the process. Shout out to Sam from England. Thank you for supporting the channel on Patreon. Members of the Barrio, check out our other New York City playlists, all linked down below in the description. And do tell me in the comments which one of these things you are most likely to try on your next trip to New York City. Guys, thank you so much for watching as always. Until next time.